Hi guys, this is a video on email basics. Now, I've had some people ask me some questions um, regarding email and several abbreviations that they've seen or heard of and they don't know what they mean and they'd like me to explain it. So, of course, I'll explain them for you. So, we'll start with CC and BCC. Now, if you see in my, I've got a compose box here for an email that I use, Fastmail, and um, I've said I want it from my email address, which I don't actually use, to a test email address and you'll notice underneath it says CC and BCC just above the subject. Now CC means carbon copy so if you want to send a copy of the email you send, so I'll just say test email, if you want to send this test email to multiple people then you can put their addresses in the CC box and the original person that you sent it to, so a.a.com, will be notified what it will say in his email that you've sent it to all these people in the carbon copy box. Now BCC means blind carbon copy and that means that this, this original guy won't know that you sent it to all these other people. So that is CC and BCC. Now POP3, um, when you send an email you're pushing an email and it's getting sent outwards and when you're receiving email you're pulling it. So POP3 is the protocol to pull email and it stands for post office protocol 3 and what you do is you have a server where your email goes into um, which you then retrieve from um, using I don't know an email client or something like that and um, what happens is it gets deleted from the server when you download it to your computer so you're downloading the, me the whole message all the messages you've got to your computer in full and it then deletes it from the server um, now, you can also, some servers can be configured to keep them for a specific amount of days or something to keep them on the server for a little bit. But this is useful if you've only got one computer that receives your email, um, you just do it through POP3 and then that'll go into your, um, into your email client such as Outlook or something like that. And then it just gets deleted from the server. So that is POP3. Now, if you have multiple computers or if you want to access um, your email from, like, say, a laptop or a desktop, or different places, um, you can use IMAP. And what IMAP is, if you think of a server um, that can hold loads, loads of emails, and if you can manipulate those emails on that server, um, such as if you, if you want to delete a file, you can set it to delete on the server. Instead of downloading everything to your computer, what it will do is you can just download the headers of your emails, but you can control what you want to do on the server. Uh, it's best for me to explain it. So here I have an IMAP server. Um, I've just got my standard inbox and you'll notice it says all these YouTube service things. I've also been to the same thing on my um, my inbox in a browser. It's got the same, exactly the same thing. So if I was to say uh, for this one that was received 2235, it says it here 2235, if I was just to say mark it to delete and you'll notice it feels like I've deleted it just on my, um, just in Outlook um, it's actually just put a cross in it but you'll see that it looks like I've just deleted it from Outlook but what's actually done is it's transmitted a message to the server and you'll notice if I refresh it in the Firefox page, you'll notice this also done it on the server, so it's constantly communicating with my server, with my IMAP server. So if I was to actually delete it from here, it will delete it from here. Um, so this is all actually not local, but on the server. And I can also set these to download, or um, usually when you click them, if I get an incomplete one, that means it's incomplete. So I just say click it and it will download it, and it's downloaded it directly. So it's constantly communicating with the IMAP server. So this is manipulating stuff on the server instead of doing it all local locally. So hopefully that's a um, decent enough explanation. I'm sorry if you don't understand that. Uh, SMTP I believe stands for Simple Message Transfer Protocol I think and um, that's the method of pushing it. It's the protocol which is usually used with POP3 and IMAP, so usually when you go to set up these two, it'll, uh, they'll ask you for an SMTP because it kind of uses the same thing. Uh, it's usually used when people send it from things like Outlook to someone else's server in their inbox and all that. It ju it's just a protocol used to transfer mail from server to server. So that's that's all I can explain really. Um, 
MIME, I think it's um, multi-purpose internet mail extensions, I apologise if I get this wrong, I'm sure, it's, I'm sure it's that, and this is used with SMTP, because SMTP is the thing that delivers your mail um, through your client emails, because you, you can get webmail, but that is handled differently, and I'm not going to go into that, so, um, MIME is, um, it's sort of, it's used with SMTP, and this is, uh, to allow, because usually SMTP only allows you to have to send ASCII characters. Now, if you don't know what ASCII is, uh, it stands for Ameri American Standard Code for Information Interchange, I think. And if you don't know what that is, I'll just quickly show table all the ones in red. You see all these ones here: not one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, F, G, H, R, J, K, M, N, P. So it it's only letting me allow it. Will only, it would only send these characters and normal letters so you could only send them in an email through SMTP now what mine does is allow you to send extra things like uh, pictures and if you're because um, usually you'd only be able to send messages in English or something like that with um, ASCII through SMTP but this will allow you to send foreign um, letters uh, things like that um, so yeah that's pretty much what MIME is I think it goes through content encoding and things like that and content types um, you may want to research into that a bit more if you really want to know about it but yeah just explaining the email basics so these are two protocols you can use another one is HTTP but that's through webmail and that's usually when people use hotmail and things like that and you can access your hotmail in Outlook I think you need to download a connector or something um, but this is handled differently because if I go to download something from my hotmail and just double click it just to read it you'll notice it doesn't come up automatically in here and it asks it says this message has not been fully downloaded would you mark it for download so I suppose it downloads all your specific emails at once but I'm not sure if you can control it from Outlook or anything like that but either way that's um, HTTP that's totally different to what I was explaining so um, that's about it really if I've said anything wrong or missed anything out then please correct me in the video and thanks for watching, please rate and subscribe.